Hey. How you doing? How are you doing, Jack? You good? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Oh, yeah. Can you see me? I can now just about hear you, but can you, can you, are you able to put your picture up? Yeah. Sorry. Hang on. There we go. Hey. Good morning. Welcome to the Phil Carew Show. This is Jack. Mason, MMA fighter and also head coach of BKK Fighters. How are you doing today? Um, yeah, I'm really good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, no, great, mate. I, this is really, honestly, an honour because, um, you know, over, over time, you know, I've, I've started to get more and more interest in, in sort of not just the um, personal development, but also the martial arts industry. And um, it's okay. been great and have, having an honour to... To, uh, to have you on uh, the, the Phil Carew show. You know, as you can tell now, I'm even trying to get my words out. I'm, I'm that uh, that overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a bit tongue-tied. So, um, yeah, in regards to that, my question to you is to start off as a starter to kickstart. Um, what got you uh, involved in MMA? You know, what's your backstory, Jack? Um, it was completely by accident. I finished university and um, I was looking for a rugby... I, I moved back home, I was looking for a rugby club to join. Uh, I was on a website called Gumtree. I don't even know if that's about anymore, but um, I was, uh, yeah, I was looking for someone like a rugby club to join. And then there was an advert for uh, a wrestling club in Chelmsford, so is where I live. So I thought, well, it was, only, it was just down the road for me. Um, I thought, well, I'll go and give it a bit of go um, because, you know, I'd, someone I'd be really interested in. What I watched when when UFC was on Bravo in over here in, in the UK, it was like a... Me and my friend used to go and what you know, I'll go around his house, we'd watch it. Yeah. And um, I was really interested in it. And then so I thought I've always wanted to do, give wrestling a try. I never thought I never thought about fighting at all. But um I wanted to try the wrestling. Um and I went down there and then so there were some people at the wrestling club that were competing in MMA. One of my a friend from school was there. He was in the GB judo team as well. So he was obviously a high level um high level uh, judoka wow. and um, uh, he was competing in MMA as well and he, he sort of said did you you know do you fancy training MMA with us um, but yeah there was there was you know at, back at back in those days there was no there was no gym especially where, where I live there was no gyms in in Essex um, that did MMA and it was it, we just found space on like a Virgin Active studio or space yeah. in, the, in, the, in the garage. Um, you know, we didn't have mats. We just sort of put um, uh, uh, duvets down or whatever. It was just, um, yeah, it was it was lots of random training. And I, and I sort of, within, I mean, it's, 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 I would never recommend any anyone to do this now, especially to the level of everyone, everyone. But I, I from the first time I started training, I had a, I had a, fight within six weeks wow um, and and i won it um <laughs> wow. and that's amazing it, it is but um especially by today's standards but you have to understand back <laughs> back then not everyone was well trained you know so it was no. uh yeah yeah so it was me the, the, the level was just completely different but now you no way you could do it the, these guys are sort of unbelievable now wow yeah <laughs> And and that so so that was 2005, I think it was. So a yeah. long time ago now, but it's um, 17 years ago, which is which is mad madness. But um, but yeah, I've been I've been doing it ever since. And uh, and I found, you know, after I was I was training with uh, with the people I was just speaking about for a short period of time, we ended up finding Tsunami Gym, which is near based in Cambridge. Um, guy called Pierre Gillet, Robbie Olivier, uh, Lee Dosky, they were they were all um, they were all competing professional uh, mixed martial arts, and they were um, Robbie had a setup in his um, father in law's uh, barn, so he so he had that was all matted. He had a cage in there. Um, yeah, we had to clean the mats every time we trained because there was rats piss everywhere. Um, wow. It, but it, it was disgusting. Oh, wow. and, um, got, Bless you. Quite, quite a few diseases, but but that that's that's the extent we did to get some training in. Um, oh. And these guys nowadays are completely spoiled. 
um, compared to what we <laughs> yeah. had to do back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, it's like the luxuries that they have now. Whereas, like back exactly, then, yeah. you know, you finding the space and being able to just do what you need to do there and then. That's it. Like um, nowadays, you know, in every every town, every town city, there's like a number of places you can train mixed martial arts. You know, lots of places you can train jujitsu. Um, it's uh, yeah. you know, it's a re- it's a really growing sport, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Now eh? you can you can do it anywhere. If you go on a holiday, um, you can always find somewhere to train jujitsu or yeah, yeah. You get some roles in. It's great. Well, that must have felt great, you know, when you go abroad and you think, oh my goodness, you know. Whereas before, when you first started off, wherever you went, you had to try and make your way to to uh, make sure you you found a place to be able to uh, to roll, as they would say, you know, as a as a fellow martial artist. <laughs> yeah. You know, they um uh, they they always tend to sort of be one of these sort of like the old school gyms, you know, sometimes when you go in there and you think you look you think, wow, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears behind yeah. everything. You go in and you think, wow, you have to clear everything, where you put a mat and everything like like you said now, yeah. you've they've even got octagons now, um, uh, inclusive yeah. with it as uh, the octagon cage as yeah. well as the, the matting, you know, in terms of that. So in terms of that, while you were doing that, how, how did it come about of being able to uh, to get to the standard to where you are? You know, obviously you've had to leaps and bounds, you've had to go through a lot of training, you know, as well as where you were with, from when you first started to to becoming a head coach for BKK Fighters. Well, so so, so obviously I've been new 17 years, so you, you do pick up some things along the way. But I, I worked with, um, uh, you know, a number of a number of coaches, so... When I, when I was at Tsunami, obviously Robbie Olivier was the he was he was the cage rage featherweight champ, but he was for a long time he was probably the best featherweight in Europe. Um, he never, you know, he he fought he had a, like a uh, I don't think it was a trilogy. I think he had two fights with Brad Pickett, um, lost one on the decision, and then and then um, and then beat Brad. Uh, for they were they were. They were always contesting for the for the cage rage featherweight title, and um, yeah. Robbie, uh, Robbie, yeah, Robbie, Robbie won one of those fights um, like uh, d- decisively, and um, but he was, he, yeah, he was one of the be- one of the best at the time, and he he we were lucky to be coached by him as myself, John Maguire, Luke Barnett, uh, Tommy Maguire, and lots lots of good people, um, and we had a, we had a really good setup. Um, so there's some excellent coaching there, and then then what Rob, what Robbie did, he he became affiliated with a guy called August Wallen, who runs yeah. the Shooters MMA, which is um that they're based out in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. So we did lots of trips out there. August is kind of still one of my um, mentors, and you know my I guess my head coach for MMA still yeah. to this day. Um, so we, you know, we used to go out there at least like two, three times a year, or he used to come over here do seminars and stuff. But the, he, he's a he's a really wise guy, and like you always used to get lots of good guidance from him. He um he's actually the guy that started the IMF, so the amateur um oh, yes the amateur tournaments um and you know he's he's like a, a leading person behind the scenes of you know all the organisational stuff for for all the, the amateur MMA like in IMF but but also um a lot of the the governing bodies um that and the commissions and stuff that that deal with all the stuff in Europe and yeah. um and 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 the UFC as well so yeah he's like a not many people know about him but he's uh he's been really influential in in mixed martial arts and, and bringing it to the level where it is today you know where you have the, all these world world amateur championships and you see these guys yes. like Mohammed Makayev that they go through that they 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 become IMF champions and then and then um and then they're going on to do big things in the UFC now so so really really cool and but but yeah so I've worked with lots of coaches you know I've traveled I've been lucky to travel around the world you know um partly with my job but also with um just for MMA but and I've been been managed to I've managed to sort of um like train with lots of lots of brilliant coaches and, and stuff like that. So you get to, you get to pick up a lot of things along the way, um, and get good tips and learn how to do things better from from all of these coaches. And and the, and the great thing about it is that you always you're always still learning. Um, and 
yeah, and uh, I'm still learning now. There's a lot, lots of lots of things can do better, and and um, and you know help improve all of the fighters that are coming through BKK fighters. What's the what's your in, sort of biggest inspiration uh, for you when you uh, during during sort of the the MMA sort of scene? What's your biggest inspiration? Um, for me, like uh, like MMA is like a is MMA is my passion because I, you know, I found it by accident, really. Um, but I, I've never sort of it changed my life. I've never looked never looked back. It's given me so many different experiences, met met loads of new people um, that I, that I would never have met before. You know, I could have just been working a nine to five and. Uh, which I still do, but like it could have been, could have been just working a nine to five, you know, going out the weekends, uh, maybe going to the gym every evening. You know, I don't know what I'm not really sure what I would have done, but a lot, you know, a lot of people fall into that routine. And yes, I do. What I've been, you know, my life is really varied. It's very, you know, very busy, but it's it's really varied, and I, I have had so many crazy experiences from MMA. You know, like a uh, fight for Cage Warriors. We we fought out in Al Fashir in the UAE in Jordan. There was there, there was um, a Jordan number of times, which, which is crazy. I was um, there was a, they were actually going to do a show in Iraq, and we almost, we almost fought there in in the green zone in Iraq. But um, wow, they they actually <laughs> they actually they actually moved the event from from Iraq to Jordan uh, with about a week and a half's notice. But we we were all set to go out there. So there's but there's I've, I can't. I mean, we'd be we would literally be all day if I was talking about all the experiences. But it's <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's just it's like a crazy crazy life, and um, and you you meet so many different people from all, all different walks of life, and it's uh, yeah, it's incredible. That could be on another podcast, Jack. You know, like a Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have another one. Is like part two, Jack Mason. <laughs> there's uh, there's like there. I've got. There's all these tsunami stories. So, for instance, like John John McGuire is like one of my best friends, but he's he's like a, he's a gypsy man, and you know um, lives you know the lives the, the proper gypsy lifestyle. And um, you know <laughs> when when would I when would I ever have met someone like that and have become really close for you know one of my closest friends? Wow! How would I, yeah. you know? Um, that's just an example, but there's loads of you know. Um, you know, you have like where I've got um, so sort of coach Corey McKenna, and and she's um, she's living out in Sacramento now. Uh, she just headed to San Diego for for a bit of training for a few weeks. But you know, getting to meet people like you know Ryan Faber and you know all, yes. all the people that she's training training with, and you know, speak to them regularly. We see how Corey's doing and stuff like that. You just these types of things you just you just never would have experienced if um uh yeah if if I hadn't become involved in martial arts so it's it's really uh it's it's really cool um and I'm just enjoying the journey really. No, I, I appreciate this journey as well because you know in in regards to this before I actually do this one of the reasons I'm doing this Jack is to share this wealth of information and um and knowledge. Uh, people's journeys because sometimes you know you get other younger audience or even other people of a, a particular age and it doesn't get filtered out you know sometimes information like this doesn't go out to to certain people where it doesn't reach you know and I'm doing yeah. my best to do that and also give people the level of confidence to know that you know, there is someone out there that's probably that can relate to you, you know, through your journey. And yeah. that'll be great. They'll be like, oh, brilliant. You know, Jack Mason can, has been doing that, you know, and oh, that's great. You know, I'll come across this by accident because sometimes, you know, you usually hear, oh, yeah, I did it when I was six years old and, you know, at the age of 12 yeah. and that. And then sometimes it's a it's by accident. Certain things, great things happen by accident, you know, in life where yeah, you don't know where you expect what to expect when you know unless you explore it you know and like you like you said yourself and um the honorable thing for myself is to be able to be in the presence of great people like yourself with having this level of experience because you get a, you don't know unless you ask I was afraid to um so you know I had a bit of 
shyness and uncertainty in in some aspects yeah. of when I was starting these interviews you know and the great thing is is to start you know that's the first step and it's the so same thing can... with yourself you know uh, I wonder what it would be like to be you know yourself at the time through your eyes and being you you know through your eyes and feeling all of that you know when you when you first won you know because you know like you said you thought oh my goodness you know it's a when you're at that level and you think right the hunger of it and then the 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 also the attention that you get in that you least expect you know it's like a, a surreal thing like you would see in the films you're like a rocky film where you go in you're like yeah, yeah you won but then what is it like for yourself you know because you know i'd like to ask you know for some people you know like, oh my goodness it's like so overwhelming you know, um, when people like see you win and you're like, freaking heck, I've done it. You know, I'm actually doing it. I've done it. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you first win. I think it, it's like for my for my first ever fight, I'd never I'd never watched like a, a fight live before. So I was, yeah. I think it was 23. So I'd never re- yeah. I'd never actually been to a box a boxing match or or, or any MMA event before live. Yeah. So I never, I never really understood what it was gonna be, gonna be like, and um, it was, it was very surreal walking in there. But, but I didn't have it because I'd never experienced it. I didn't, I didn't actually have any, any nerves. Right, so yeah, it was very strange. I walked in, and um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's madness. The guy <laughs> came at me, and um, <laughs> wow, yeah, and and yeah. Um, you kind of, you kind of in it, you know. You're you're yeah. in that fight, and um, it's just a very yeah, it's a very strange, um, it's a very strange like experience. Um, and I t- I tell you what, when I when I won the first bout, like as as I, as I said, I'd I'd only been training for six weeks. I didn't have anything to lose. It was a brand new experience. So yeah. whilst winning was great, it didn't really mean anything. Because, because ultimately, you know what, what, um, what the biggest thing about winning in mixed martial arts is for me, at least, is that if you've put in all of the hard work. So, yes. say for instance, that a fight camp has taken, you know, whatever, two or three months, and you've put everything on the line for that. You know, you sacrificed whatever it is, nights out, like food, which I love. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. To make, yeah, to make the weight, like all that type of stuff, you know, um, you know, sacrifice money because, you know, there was never, especially back then, but, but even even now, you know, you, until you get to the very top, you're, you're basically paying for, you know, you're paying to fight, which is which is yeah. fine. Um because it's because that's it. It's your hobby. It's the same thing in any sports. But um, your you, you, yeah. So everything, the, the money, the time, the sac, you know, sacrifice, the diets, everything. If you put that all on the line for t- for two months, and then you've got fifteen minutes to make all of that sacrifice worth yeah. it. Well, when yeah. you de- when you then win, that's what you know. That is where when the the re- the big feelings come. You know, if you've had <laughs> if you're if you're fighting, you know, and I always say this to the guys that coach, but if you're fighting a credible opponent, so a guy that, because this happens a lot, especially in boxing, right? If you're fighting, of course, yeah. If you're fighting a guy that is not there to to either, he's not there to win. He's just going to see you through the rounds because that that is basically boxing until yeah. you get to forty and zero, and then you actually have a real fight, or in MMA, you do get that less, which is what, which is why I love it. But um, there are there are still instances where if if you if you know that either your your opponent's not there to win, they're there to either get paid or they're just not capable of winning. You know, you, you, there's a big mismatch. Then there's no there's no way you can feel good about yourself when you win. You know, so yeah. you need to have a credible opponent that's there to win. And you have put you have sacrificed, put stuff on the line, you know, for the, all the training and everything, um, to, and that's when the, the the biggest and best feelings come. You know, I bet, you've, yeah. you, you've overcome that challenge. You beat that you beat that um, tough opponent, and everything that you've sacrificed has all been worth it for that moment. And and that's when you get the re, you know, 
the feeling is just incredible. It's like, it, it, it's hard to describe, but it's just, it's the best feeling in the world, honestly. Bet, and that, yeah. you know, that is why, you know, people, you know, fighters fight till, um, till they're, you know, until a lot of the time, till they're, they're washed up and, and old and, and just can't do it anymore. Um, rather than sort of um, going out on top or, or what, yes. what, you know, whatever it is, you know, because you're always chasing that, you're always chasing that, um, that next win and, and so, that next yeah. fight. Yeah. So, so for instance, so like Tony Ferguson, you know who that, you know, is? so he fought Nate Diaz last, last weekend, but any, anyway, so he, oh, yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he, he was um, for about 10 years, always, he was always like, at the very top in terms of the UFC, he was always, he was the interim champ. He, he never fought Habib, but he, that fight was always supposed to happen. Um, and he, he was, he was the man at, at one point in time. And recently he's a bit, he's a bit older now and he's, he's on a, like a, maybe a three or four fight losing, losing skid. And he doesn't need the money anymore. You know he he's made so he's made, he's made more than enough money to retire, but he keeps yeah. he keeps coming back to fight. Yeah, and yeah. He doesn't he doesn't need to. He should retire because he's just he's too he's too old now. You, you can just see from his performances. <laughs> but wow, you're always you're always chasing that next high. Yeah, and um, if you haven't experienced that, you know what what will keep happening though is he'll keep chasing the high and he'll keep losing, which is which is obviously not not good because the, no. the 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 losing especially if you put things on the line the losing can be a really like a really low it can be a really yeah. low number you know that's true um, people get people get very depressed about it um which is understandable and then and then the only way you can eradicate that and you can never eradicate it forever you know forever but is by is by getting that next win and then it makes you does it does make you feel a lot better in regards to that, what do you have like um, a little routine, a little ritual thing that you have in the morning? You know, uh, what do you have? You know, do you have like when you wake up, first thing you do, do you get grab a coffee, tea, or do you go mm. to the gym? What do you do? Um, well, I'm I'm not competing anymore. I've I've retired, but um, I was. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. So I always worked full time. Um, I work. I work in financial services, so I uh, I've got a pretty busy job. It's um, uh, and when I was when I was fighting, I was working in in London, so I'd have to be in office for eight thirty. So I would get up early, train. You know, I go for a run. I go. I would go to wow. lift weights, whatever it is. Um, then go to obviously then go to work. Then at lunchtime, I would try to get a session in as well. So if it, for, if, for instance, I hadn't lifted weights or, um, or you know, in the, in the morning, then I might, I might lift, you know, I've gone for, gone for a run, I might lift weights at, at lunchtime. And then in the evening, just to, this is the only way I, I can work it around my my training, but I would I would then go and do my skills work. So, the, you know, the wrestling, the, the boxing, the tie boxing, the jiu-jitsu, MMA, whatever, whatever it was every evening. Um, and then, and then, obviously, just start, you know, go and repeat that next day. So that was always, you know, it was always tough to fit fit all of that stuff in, but I, but I managed it. Um, but I think, you know, from from my perspective, as I said, MMA was always a hobby. From in terms of my career, I never, I never sort of gave up work and gave it a hundred percent, like um, like a lot of the guys now nowadays are doing. You know, I've got. There's, there's amateurs that um, there's amateurs that train full time now, you know, because they, because they're so they're so intent on um, you know making a full career out of it, and uh, you yeah. know getting to the very top. You know those guys sacrifice. I mean they, they sacrifice everything. It's uh it's it's a, it's a tough one because I think I think you can get away with it when you're younger. Yeah. Uh, but when you start getting a bit older, you know, and you You've maybe got a girlfriend or a wife or you've got kids as well. If you're, yeah. you know, you can't be from my my perspective, once you once you do those things, um, it's very difficult, I think, to 
to sacrifice all of those things, you know, like uh, earning money to to pay for your uh, yeah, of course, yeah, to pay for your, your your place to live and your food and all that type of stuff. Um, so so some people manage it through through sponsorship or just being really careful with their money, but it's very very difficult. Yeah. So what what are your let's just say um food if you had I'm just gonna go off track here because I like mm. I did mention to you that I'm gonna be a bit random but be a bit of light hearted bit of fun. Um if you were to have a choice now and you got yeah. the money on you and you're right, right, I could have any variety of food with me right now, what meal what meal, what dish would you have now if you had the choice to have? Depends what um uh d- yeah it depends what mood you're in isn't it but right now if you can ask me i'd have i'd, I'd have steak lobster oh. and, and rosemary uh rosemary nice. chips so, yeah oh sounds great i could taste that already yeah, <laughs> yeah. if yeah. you were to have a choice yeah in regards you've got two choices they'll either be dead or alive it can be historical or someone that you hold quite close dearly or that you've known and um who, yeah who would you have dinner with where would you have dinner and what would you say to them what would you talk about Fuck. <laughs> not bad question eh <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a, it's a it's a good one. Um, there's lots of th- there's lots of things that um, I yeah. That, it's a really it's a really tough um, it's a really tough question to answer. There's like uh, there's lots of um, historical uh, people that you'd like to to meet and understand what. Um, why they did the things that they did yeah and uh, um so i think for you know it's, it's a it's a strange you know maybe it's a str- it's a strange one but i wouldn't mind having that's really this is a really tough one um <laughs> Bless you. Just, the thing is i just want to i would want to know the secrets you know like yeah. um uh during the covid times right i always yeah. wanted to have a, a chat to like uh like to boris johnson and just, and and just, but really you know and yeah. obviously you'd have to if you get if you get in add into this question you know you have yeah, to yeah. give them a pill where they have to take they have to tell you the truth yeah that's, well, a good, then, that's a good answer yeah. that's a good answer i like that well, i like that well, i was just during, just during covid i was like well speaking to I, just, I would want to speak to Boris and just really know what the fuck's going on because I love that. You know, <laughs> it was, you know was there um you know because there were all loads of conspiracy theories and I think they're probably there's probably a bit more to what happened than yes you know what uh what we all know about um and maybe that come out in future years but yeah and also just to say you know why like because it for, for me it was like you ruin you know you're ruining my business you're yes. um you're just causing causing me problems in my in my daily life like you know and I couldn't I couldn't <laughs> yeah. I couldn't yeah. see the point of it and yeah. and it almost seems now that you know all the things that I was thinking you know are logical yes um it, are, are right now because basically we just decided it was gone and then no one talks about it anymore and it's gone you know so yeah, anyway, that's at the that's time that's one. that's what I would have liked. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that would be a good one. Yeah, but what would you be eating? What you'd be eating at the time while you're asking him? Would you be a pie and mash? Would it be a, a foreign cuisine? What would it be? <laughs> it would be, yeah, it would be it'd be some sort of meat dish because I just love I just love meat. Yeah, yeah just yeah. so steak and then something else with some steak, steak and kebabs or something like that. Well, that would be nice. Mm. Uh, anyone, anyone like 
that you would know it could be it doesn't have to be famous they could be famous they don't have to be famous you know past you know or historical where something uh, something here um it could be funny you know because i've heard someone mention to me they wanted to speak to elvis someone yeah. wanted to speak to them to their loved one that's that they knew or a friend you know and stuff like that sort of give you sort of an insight of what you could choose your next one hmm. don't know and it, I, like i'm quite boring i just want to know i just want to know the truth on lots of things that have happened in history so yeah. um i don't know maybe jfk or something like that just, to, oh, just wow to know the truth. do you know or, what that's the good one I w- i'd love to know that too as well actually jfk yeah or michael jackson to find out if you really did it yeah you know, the, all those, all those types of things like yeah i was always, I was always a big mj fan anyway i still I still am in terms of, in terms yeah. of his music, musical ability and what stuff would like you that. What, what would you be eating with eating with him would it be the same thing or with something else chuck it in, in the mix <laughs> oh, no, yeah. i don't know Any, anything mate i i i'm a i love i love meat and then i love ice cream so oh ice cream we'd have to, oh. yeah we'd have to have some sort of gelato to uh, finish oh which nice is, which is what, what, what i love Oh, what's actually, your favourite ice cream? Oh, mine's uh, rum and raisin. <laughs> um, so, so where we, we travelled quite a bit and like done done lots of fights and 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 me and my wife travel in. Uh, we go yeah. to Italy and there's um yeah. there's a gelato place called Venci, um, and um, they've got there's they've got like a loads of different ice creams. They've got like a May, like mainly the nice like that the hazelnut hazelnut ones and oh, uh wow. ones but nice. they, they do this one called cremino which is like yeah. a it's like a hazelnut uh base yeah. and then they, then it's like layered with like um like some sort of chocolate mm. it's not like it's, it's a sauce but it's, a, it's kind of a cream and like it's, it's quite a firm consistency and then they have some sort of caramel top but when they uh when they uh, scoop it out, yeah, it all kind of mixes together. It's 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 nice. Wow, so that's, that's that yeah. <laughs> that's so if, you ever, if you ever go to Rome or yes, any, or any, any of the Italian airports as well, there's always a venti there. So give it a go. Oh wow! If you had any, you had a, a few superpowers, and you had a choice, right? And they were like, they said, right, Jack, you're going to walk into this room. You absorb all these powers, right? Which ones would you choose and why would you use them and what would you use them for? If you can have a choice and go, do you know what? I'm going to have this. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> That'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. What would they be? Um, I think to be, be able to control time because I'm always late. And uh, yeah. I've always got, I've always got to get stuff done. I've, I've yeah, always yeah. got to get stuff, stuff done. Yeah. And uh, yeah, give me, give myself some more time to get things done. And um, and also, if you could control time, you, you could. I'm sure you could go back in time and 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 f- go to the places that you uh, that I want to find out. S- s- what about s- what really stuff happened in history? So yeah, that would be uh, that would be cool. That would be great. So you'd be like a Doctor Strange. You could do whatever you want, yeah, you know, exactly, yeah. there and then. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, in regards to right, uh, some other topics that I like to mention, this is going to be a funny one. I'm going to, here you go. Here one moment. I don't usually do this, but here's a few things because I, I wanted to ask you. It'd be great. What was it like to work alongside Arnold Allen, AAA? What's it? What's it like to work like? Yeah, work alongside yeah, him? yeah. Um, yeah, it's a it's a pleasure, mate. Because I've I've been coaching Arnold since he was about fourteen or fifteen, I think. Um, so it's wow, a long time now. So fourteen years, something like that. Yeah, um, and he's. You know, obviously he's he's one of the best in the world now, um, yes. and he 
he's he's I mean he's still like he's still like one of the well we're still the hardest work in the room at all times. Um and he he's just like a he's just like the most humble he's just one of the most humble men you know you could you could get you could get. Like he's not what's what's so great about it obviously he you know he wants to be the the best in the world he wants to be I, I believe he'll be I, honestly I'll be when when things are all said and done I think he'll be the greatest of all time um and and all those things I think he 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 knows and believes in his um believes in his own mind that this this is going to happen as well he yeah. just um he's just got to continues to keep putting the work in consistent, consistently, which which he does. Um and all these things are just gonna happen as a as a you know as a matter of time. And um he you know he's got to go his next big fight in uh just over four weeks. So yeah. on the 29th of October. So his, his first main event for the UFC uh versus Kelvin Cater and um he's he's gonna be you know, obviously, like I believe he's gonna beat the guy. Um, yeah, I look for I look forward to watching that as well. Yeah. I'm I'm I've been I've been tracking both of you. It's like I, this is why I feel so honoured. I wouldn't mind interviewing him myself <laughs> at some point. Yeah, it'd be great to hear have his insight as well. It might even have both of you on the panel. That would be quite funny. <laughs> yeah, he's um he's he's yeah he's he's a he's a brilliant guy and mm. and you know he's everything that he. Everything that he earns and achieves, he, you know, he's going to be, he deserves, you know, because he's worked, he's, you know, he's worked for it. Um, and I think, you know, he's going to be, I'm sure he's going to be the world champ next year. Mm. Um, but he, yeah, he's just one of the, he's one of the nicest guys and, you know, in and out of the cage. And the way, the way that he's done it, you know, he hasn't, he doesn't talk, he doesn't talk the shit. He doesn't, no. um, you know, he's not like a big vocal person. He's not, you know, he's not in it for the fame at all. No, but you know, the money's the money's coming, but he's not in it for the money either. It's uh, he's just he's just doing it for the love of the sport and compete, and he just loves to fight. And um, I can tell both of you are very yeah. passionate. Both of you have been very passionate about it, and I can I can see that as well by watching over time. You know, you, the passion you put in it and the training. Um, the other part as well, his dad that works very closely yeah. with, with his dad, and no doubt there's probably some humorous occasions. What's the funniest moments that three of you, and even I think his brother, wasn't it, he trained with as well. So I think you've, there must have been, what's the funniest moment you've you've ever sort of remembered were to, together? Well, I mean, obviously we, we, we traveled like all, all over different different places and stuff with, uh, with, with Pacer, Arnold, um, everyone. But I think, I think, and this isn't necessarily it's not necessarily funny there's, there's plenty of funny moments but his, his dad's his dad's hilarious as well but um he one of the most memorable moments is arnold arnold's dad pacer he he was 47 years old and he wanted to do another fight so he yeah. you know he's 47 we were like you know you're a bit old old now there's no you know there's no need uh to be yeah. putting your body into so and he said oh well, I've, I've been i've been offered this fight it was in in ipswich um wow and he, it was against this absolute monster this this like steroid monster who's wow. under, under 30 years old was a, a giant of a man and uh <laughs> and we were like oh God, no pace come on this isn't this isn't the fight. He was like, "This is the one I want." I was like, "All right." Um, so we ended up, we ended up, you know, except he, you know, he's his own man. He wanted to do it, and and uh, we 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 were there for him, and we went out, and um, this this guy beat the shit out of him for the first couple of minutes, and uh, <laughs> I went, like, oh my god, like because Pace is a big man, right? But this guy oh, yeah. absolutely, this guy absolutely dwarfed him. You know, he was way, way bigger, and and young, athletic. You know, was a uh, and he, Pacer was eating knees to the head. You know, all sorts of stuff. And but he just kept coming back, kept coming back, kept coming back, and then and then he got some big takedowns, and he was, 
landed some good ground a pound. The guy got to his feet, landed some more knees to the head, which was which was worrying. And uh, yeah. this was one of the cra- craziest fights, just back and forth, back and forth. And in the end, Pacer got like landed left to knock the guy out, and uh, and they were both absolutely exhausted. But that was the craziest, one of the craziest fights I've ever seen in my life. Just two wow. ginormous monsters of men, uh, just back and forth, back and forth. And that that was that was probably one of uh, one of my most memorable moments with those guys because you know obviously Arnold seen his dad in that type of fight. Yeah. Sorry, just getting a phone call. I'm sure he was worried, and he, he uh, as uh, as pace of one, Arnold just yeah. jumps over the cage into the cage, hugging his dad. He's just like, um, yeah, so like so happy for him. I'm sure really proud of him as well. And and yeah, wow, was, uh, that's crazy. Was that one of his last fights? Because I remember because I was watching that, it, and was, they, they were just they were doing that, weren't they? They were talking about it, like, oh my god, dad, is that yeah. your last one? You're like, nah, yeah, that's it, that's enough. Yeah. That was his last one, yeah. <laughs> it, it was oh his, my God, what a good way to go out as well, yeah. Oh yeah, that's amazing because like I'm winning that, and then all, <laughs> all the things you've gone through with that, and you're yeah. like, no, I know, I know that. I go, to go. What a way to go out or win like that, though. That's amazing. Yeah. At 47 as well, just mental. Yeah, not many people. That, not many people that could do it. God. One of the other questions I'd like to ask you as well is um, if you had a choice to travel right now with your wife and family mm-hmm. members and you were right, you thought right now, look, just go out there, go and do it, pack your bags, we're going to go and do this. Where yeah. would you go to and why? Why would you do that? You know, in, in regards to why would you go there? It doesn't have to be anywhere you've been to. You can go to somewhere where, you know, you thought, oh, I haven't been there yet. That, that looks interesting. Where would, would you, you like to travel? Do you mean go go live or go just go? A holiday. In the holiday, yeah. Just go, right. Right, I'm going to go out this and do this. Because obviously, without having to worry, let's just say, if you didn't have to worry about anything at all, with your business like that, and then you said, right, me and the missus, family members, we'll just go out now you know for this certain period of time where would you go to uh bora bora i think oh looks nice so, yeah it's in it's in like the south pacific and it's yeah look we, we were we were thinking about going on our honeymoon yeah um but it was i mean the prices we got quoted we just but it was over 20 grand and to, to go for a couple of weeks and it was just like it was also a really, it was also a, a really long flight. I think you have to fly to Australia, then to New Zealand, then from New Zealand oh, to wow. yeah. somewhere, yeah, like Tonga or something like that. And then you have to get it's wow. a long, long, long time long to get to. It's almost two days to get there. Um, wow. So, but but it looks amazing. So we we would uh, yeah we'd love to do that. I think. Have you ever tried? Because I'm of Philippine origin. Yeah. Have you ever tried Filipino food? Yeah, I've been to Manila. Oh, brilliant. Have, have you I... tried balut? The the balut. I always ask people this. Have you tried balut? No, what it what is it? Oh my goodness. I said this to one of the FMA fighters uh, on my on the last episode. It was right. hilarious. <laughs> it's an egg. Yeah. With a duck embryo in it. <laughs> oh no, I was I was watching um Mark Bell's Power Project uh yeah. yesterday with um uh Mike O'Hearn on it, right? And at the end of the podcast they ate they ate those. Uh they ate some of I, I recognise the name. Um have a watch of that have a watch of that podcast. It's oh. on YouTube. Um Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I, there was <laughs> there was six of them eating it's like duck eggs, right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. 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 And inside yeah. it, they show you what's inside. And apparently, because it's a, it's a, well, I don't know. My mum and, and family's members say it's like a myth. What that some people do just can say they don't see it because they'll eat mm. it because it's a form of source of like uh, a yeah, delicacy no, I, of protein. I have, I have eaten eggs with embryos uh, in them. 
but I've not eaten the like specific like the uh, Filipino style ones. But but yeah, I have eaten those eggs. Yeah. Wow. What is it like eating it? Is it mm. crunchy? <laughs> it's not great. Like from for me, it's not great. Well, the, it's not crunchy because the bones aren't formed. So it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. it's all still quite like um, soft. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's a bit. Um, I don't know. It's more of a, like a like a mental thing. I think if I was really really hungry, you know, been starving out in the wild, I wouldn't. I would just I would yeah. love it. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. Oh, oh wow. Um, but yes, I have eaten them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. In mm. regards to if there was a if you were fighting now and you weren't retired, yeah, who would be uh, the top person that you'd like to have had about about with in the octagon? If you had a choice right now, okay. so you might you might not have heard of him, but there was a guy called there's a Swedish guy called David Belkeden, and he was I think I think he was the first Swedish fighter in the UFC. Um, he, but anyway, so he's around roughly I think he's maybe a year year or two older, but he's roughly around my age, and he was always a guy that I was that I, I kind of should have fought. Um, mm. I was matched twice against him when on Cage Warriors, and he, he wasn't able to make it um, on on those th- both of those fights. So that's the guy I would, even if I was going to fight now, that's the guy I would like to fight just because he's a, he very you know very good. He fought in the UFC, you know, quite a few times. He's uh, like Jiu Jitsu black belt or whatever, um, but yeah, very good. Um, but I always wanted to always wanted to fight him. So that that's the that's the guy I'd like to fight. In regards to having links with um, other fighters, in regards to that, um, Luke, uh, when was the last time you spoke to uh, Luke Luke Bonnet? Uh, yesterday. Wow. I was <laughs> speaking some more time. I speak some more time. Oh, I might, brilliant. Maybe take the mick out of him. Pardon? <laughs> Taking the mick out of him, bless yeah. you. Uh, yeah, how's 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 it been? Because I know in, in sort of regards to training, because I know he's been re- um, been training um, quite a lot, similar to um, um, Arnold Arnold Allen, and it's been sort of pleasure, even like speaking to yourself, because I know it's yeah. not always been easy. What's it like in terms of like balancing things? Because how it was with you, you know, and being able to do work. How did you manage to get sort of that sort of routine and shift of saying, well, look, I've got work here. I've got family time and I know it's not always easy, but you know, you, you tend to sort of manage it, you know, when you, when you want to do it, you go out there and then you, you know, your partner must be very supportive of the times, you know, during the times when you were doing the, the training before you retired, you know, and, and other sort of other things, you know, meeting friends and stuff like that. Cause sometimes people don't realize behind closed doors, it's not what you see on the telly, you know, other you yourself, you're human like us, you know, you, you've got a life as well, you know, and, what is it like in being able to talk, do that, you know, to, to, to have maintained well, that balance before you retire? That's, that's come with some of the things that I've had to sacrifice, you know, like, um, you know, meeting friends, doing stuff with, with, with friends and family as well, like uh, to focus on, um, on sort of MMA and, and my sort of day job as well. Um, and and running yeah like running sort of BKK fighters. I always put on, put on the Cage Warriors Academy events. Um, so it's a you know a lot of a lot of time goes into that. Um, obviously, I have to spend you know I want to spend time with my wife and we've got we've got a, a kid now as well. So I have to make time for that. Um, but the things that have the things that I have sacrificed a lot is is spending time with my friends and stuff like that. You know. I, I can't remember the last time I went out with with any of my friends um, for anything really. I went to a wedding um, the other day uh, with, with some of my school friends, and like I haven't seen them for some of them I haven't seen for years, you know. Um, so that type of that type of thing, you know, I have sacrificed, um, mm. which I'm okay with because you know I've I've been doing the things that I want to do, you know, and I've prioritized. Yeah, that's true, yeah. But mm. still would have been, yeah, you know, is what it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Last 
last lastly what i'd like to ask yeah. you because honestly it's been hand and heart been an honor uh, being able to interview you um, is there any other passion other than martial arts that you'd like to do is it like do you like fishing anything like that or or anything else like no any particular thing that you'd like to do apart from martial arts that you i, I like to any I like passion? To I like to walk my dogs and lift weights and train martial yes. arts. That's it. I, I've got no other hobbies. I find every, I find yeah. everything else. I find everything else boring. I like. I like to also believe it or not. I like to work. So um, I just like. I like to stay busy. I like uh, overcoming challenges. You know, like in my day job, I, I run a like a team of. Um, I run a change management team, so lots of project managers, and we're, okay. we're dealing with you know, lots of high-profile clients. And um, and in in that job, you know, ultimately what you're doing is just sort of overcoming challenges and fighting fires all day, so that so that you know the the, the teams that are you know working on the projects can actually deliver to the projects. And and it's quite similar to when you know where I, I run sort of BKK fighters. You know, loads of loads of stuff comes up like that. So some pulled last week, some pulled the a sink off the wall. You wow. know, and then you get running around. You, you know, then you run around fixing that. You know, getting that fixed because you got members. You got members coming in all the time. So of course, yeah. That that type of thing, you you, you can't be out of action for more than sort of no. a couple of hours. You know, really, because um, wow. Otherwise, there's, there's there's like loads more problems. So just yeah, just stuff like that, um, and then. Obviously, with my with the MMA show like Cage Rules Academy, obviously there's lots of. Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's another it's another podcast, but going into um, yeah to to put on live events is difficult enough, and then you got you got fighters and fighters um, egos and personalities yeah. and their their life getting in the way of sort of matchups and stuff like that makes yeah. it makes it really difficult um but yeah I, I love it and it's a passion of mine and that's why I keep doing it um but yeah uh, I can't remember what I can't remember what the question was now <laughs> <laughs> no that's all right yeah what's the up the the update is to just to sort of sort of as a form of sort of uh closure on here just to let everyone else know because obviously this is pre-recorded um what would you say in terms of, sort of the uh, the up and coming events? Um, what where would they be, and what uh, who who would be fighting? You know, for BKK, well, so, what's the yeah, current so, current news? Yeah. So my next my next event is the Cage Rose Academy twenty nine is on the eighth of October. So we're just over a week and a half away. Um, we've got some. I mean, we've got I think we've got thirty five fights matched. Some incredible fights, you know. We we get guys from all over Europe um, that that come and fight on fight on the event. Uh, the headline headline fight is a guy called Charlie Falco. He's from he's from BKK fighters. He's he's actually a straw weight fighter, so it's difficult to find the guys to fight at that weight. But, you know, they're very light. Um, really, the only types of people you know out, out in the Philippines you get a lot of, you get you get a yes. lot of straw weight fighters. Uh, yeah. Um, also, yeah, all, all around Asia, really, um, and we need to really, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna bring in guys for him to fight uh, on the Cage Rules Academy, and then once we run out of those guys, yeah. we're gonna have to look to to get him to fight out in out in Asia, maybe on One FC, um, to really progress his career because obviously the UFC don't have a straw weight weight division, no, no. nowhere, no. nowhere really has a straw weight division, so we're gonna make that happen. He's a really good fighter, but he d- he did a lot of his early fights at higher weight classes, which of course, yeah, yeah, he shouldn't be fighting at because he's, he's a, you know they're just completely outsized. So, so oh, that, that's no. a good point. yeah. I really appreciate that. Would it be possible, you know, obviously just to, this is to make this official and off the cuff. Yeah. Then I'd I'd love to uh, to come down and be able to obviously with, with your the fighters and yourself's permission to be able to interview them. You know, for I'd love to come in. And sort of be able to do that, and even during when the event, you know, I'd, I'd come along. Let me know, update yeah, me course, when mate. things are, and then I'll, I'll see if it's possible to come down and interview people. Yeah. So to give out a bit more exposure and what what you guys are doing, you know, give 
a lot of people uh, some information and content and some acknowledgement of what you got great you guys are doing you know with the great work you're doing in the background as well as the foreground you know yeah yeah absolutely mate um yeah we'll, we can make that happen um and then so yeah another another big fight there's a guy that has had all the all of his amateur fights on our our event john vetler Hugh. Uh, Führerheim. He's a Norwegian guy, but he's he's known as the Wonder Boy out in Norway, and um, he's ve like very very good. He's been you know he was he was fighting an hour event, sort of when from when he was sort of fourteen, and now he's he's coming up to nineteen now, and he's making his pro debut, and he's he's special talent, and uh, yeah, we're going to see how how that fight goes, but he, uh, wow. he that's going to be a really exciting fight. Um, Lots of lots and lots of other good good fighters on the on the, the show. Uh, Vad uh, Gazetis, he, he's he's excellent. Uh, Ala Chiab, uh, Chiabi, um, Jimmy Quinn, there's Tariq Pell. There's there's tons of good fighters in there. Wow. Go to our, yeah, go to our Instagram page, uh, CWA underscore yeah. uh, Southeast, and uh, yeah, we, we've got so many good fights. Uh, on the, on the cards for, for, for everyone. So it's going to be brilliant. Yeah. I look forward to it in, in regards to, to that, you know, I'm, I'm really, really honored uh, to, to have this interview with you, Jack, because it'd be great. You know, once this goes out and I'll let you know when this launched, you know, um, possibly, possibly today, um, earlier today, maybe, maybe even tomorrow. Cause you okay. know, I'm, I've had to play catch up. We've, we've yeah. been able to sort of load everyone on there. I've had so much interest in stuff and, you know, other than yeah. martial arts and you know, the personal development side and business, yeah. you know, um, as well, the business side, you know, you get people in the business world, like even like yourself, you know, part of business. Uh, that could be another thing that we could talk about, you know, off yeah. off the podcast, you know, it'd be good to, to help promote what you do, you know, in business side as well as the martial arts um yeah it'd be, it'd be great you know who, who knows what could come of this podcast as well as you know the show because yeah you know it'd be great to be able to interview your fighters and even other people you know on there what you know apart from sort of going to Colchester and other events so you who knows you know if the Phil Carew show could have a lot of more more um more content next, in terms of the martial arts yes be the next Joe Rogan that's it mate that's what I'm aiming for <laughs> That's it, mate. You never. The, the funny thing is, I, I could be the one up interviewing Joe Rogan and say, yeah. "Well, mate, I'm here now." <laughs> <laughs> what well, you've been doing with yourself, mate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd love he, that. He thought he. Um, I watched. Uh, I, I didn't watch a lot of it, but I watched probably. I think his first episode. Um, mm. the, only the other day, but his first ever episode. It was very different. To what he's now you know he was he was kind of stumbling on his words and um he was very slow and stuff like that and it's great to see how you know obviously he he started in a place where yeah it wasn't it wasn't the best um but now he's he's probably the biggest podcast in the world now so uh it's pretty yeah it's pretty incredible um how, what he's done with that and and the following he's built up Yeah, Phil, you're still on mute. Sorry, can you hear me? Sorry yeah. about that. This is the, this is going to be this is why it's off the cuff and unedited. This is going to be fun. I like all this raw stuff because sometimes you know it's all this edited glitzy stuff. You're like, oh, by the way, we're going to have all this music, pyrotechnics, yeah. blah blah blah, and then look, this is a Phil no Phil Crucial. Like, well, no, we can look back on this one day and you'll laugh. You go, do you know what, Phil? You know, um, I had a phone call coming in, and so did I. Not just you, just a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to try and unmute it. And it's amazing, isn't it? You, you, you let people know. You go, sorry, I've got a serious podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a great guest, special guest here. And then you're trying to call me right in the middle of it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when they see that one day, they'll go, oh, sorry. Was, was I the yeah. one that called you in the middle of that? Yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like, yeah. is that my claim to fame, Phil? I tried <laughs> to call Jack. Can I try to call you? You know, I was on the pod. No, you weren't actually on the podcast. You just uh, interrupted yeah. the conversation. <laughs> yeah, Jack, what I'll do, mate? I'll, 
seriously, I'll catch up with you and, and whenever your earliest convenience is, because I've got your details here. So what I'm, I'll send you some information and see where we can go from there, because I would love to interview your fighters, you know, uh, whenever, you know, obviously ask your permission and their permission, then we'll set something up. I'll be able to um, be able to do that Brilliant. in regards to um, interview yourself and, and, and your fighters and the events that you'll be running. I'll be great cool. to do that in the foreseeable future. All right, perfect. Th thanks, thanks very much, Phil. No, no problem, mate. I'll let you crack on now, mate. Have a good day. Right. And yeah, you too. it's been it's been a pleasure and an honour, Jack. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the, thanks for the chat. No right. problem, mate. Uh, there's been one the first of many, Jack. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, give me just drop me your uh, yeah, drop me a message and we'll sort it out. All no right. problem, buddy. Have a good day. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Cheers, mate. Take bye. care. Bye bye. -bye.